Welcome back, everyone. Stan Zimmerman is a creative writer and director in many mediums, from TV to film to stage. He's been recognized for his comedy writing on The Golden Girls, the Lifetime sitcom Rita Rocks, and writing for both Brady Bunch movies and so much more. Stan's literary debut, The Girls, From Golden to Gilmore, details his time working with some of the most famous women in television, including Lily Tomlin, Roseanne Barr, Lauren Graham, and all four Golden Girls. We are so happy to have Stan Zimmerman with us today. Stan, thanks so much for being here. I had a lot of pressure since you're the best hair on TV, so I really <laughs> tried, tried to do it good today. <laughs> You did a good job and you looked at my bio, right? Maybe a little bit. <laughs> love it, love it, love it. Um, so I enjoyed the book so much, The Girls from Golden to Gilmore. And I must tell you what, yeah, there we go, what caught my eye. This is so funny. I have three kids, Stan. I have a son and two daughters. My girls are fanatics about the Gilmore Girls. And my son loves Golden Girls. And he has a Golden Girls coffee mug. <laughs> You've got your B. Arthur. Absolutely, absolutely. With the line that we wrote, I make not a cent on it, but I love the coffee, coffee, coffee in it. I love it. I love it. Well, when I saw that, I thought, oh, I have to talk to this guy. And I'm so glad that I have the chance to. You know, what I took from your book is dream big and believe in yourself and most importantly say yes to unexpected opportunities because so many times we think we're going to do this path but other little doors open and we wind up in a different place and it turns out to be great tell me how a random idea led to your first writing credit on the golden girls uh well my writing partner jim berg and i got offered a chance to go in and pitch to this new show starring four older women living in Miami. It hadn't been on the air yet, but they had just picked it up and NBC was very excited about it. Conventional wisdom back then was that there would never be uh, a hit show with four older women, but um, people seemed to really like it. And we went in, we pitched a bunch of ideas. They hated every single idea. I didn't know what to do. Oh. So we're walking out the door and in the door jam, I don't know what came over me. I spun around and I said, what if Rose's mother came to visit? And there was a long pause and I thought they're probably gonna call security, but they said, come back in and sit down. There's something here. And we all started talking about what that episode would be. And we walked out with a freelance episode, which means we get to write one episode and they're paying us. Isn't and they that loved it. We did. incredible? Yes. Isn't that and incredible? Liked it. So much that they brought us on staff. It's really hard to find writers that can write good first drafts for an existing show. And uh, we got really lucky. You know, I love, um, I love the Golden Girls and I am such a fan of the author. I loved her when she was Maud. You call her the mother of shade. Yes. Well, it, it was very intimidating because I had grown up on Maud too. And suddenly here we were having to write for this television icon. And she has a very imposing presence, but she really was a pussycat. She was kind of shy and not very talkative when we were around her. Um, but we also learned a very valuable lesson. So we would get sent off to write uh, five different jokes to end a scene. And then we'd go away back in the writer's room and have to pitch them. And the writers would pick which the, was the best one. And so we had to come up with a joke for B. Arthur. And we realized she didn't need words. All B. Arthur had to do was shoot someone a look and the audience <laughs> would roar with laughter. I've never seen anybody before right. or after be able to get a laugh just by her look. We knew what she was thinking. Right. She had such an impressive face. And so we kind of invented that term, shoots a look, and we put it in many scripts, but never the same as B. Arthur. Oh, it's, it's funny, you told a very cute story in your book about being in line behind her one time unexpectedly, like at a movie theater. And I think maybe she was with Angela Lansbury, is that right? Well, we didn't know it. All of a sudden we heard this booming low voice and we looked at each other and said, that's B. Arthur. And then next to her is standing Angela Lansbury. That's crazy. And we were just 
just in an afternoon matinee movie going out like two girlfriends just um, having lunch and going to see a movie. So my writing partner said, do not speak to them because I really wanted to go up there and say, hi, do you remember us? He said, she'll never remember us. But we sat right behind them and they laughed at every dirty joke in the movie. Oh, that's funny. And I, I don't remember the movie at all, but no, I but just remember, remember them. Yeah. them and just watching them like a TV show. I love it. I love it. Now, I have to talk Gilmore Girls for just a minute because, as I said, my girls love that show. Oh, my gosh. Stan, it's so hard for me to listen to. There's so much dialogue. It is exhausting. That's my you, writing do, it. <laughs> and that's, that's what it is. I mean, every single word means something. Yes. Yeah, so normally our shows are about 60 pages because they talk so fast. We had to write 90 pages. Oh, my gosh. But what's so interesting is that Gilmore Girls in 2023, the New York Times reported it was the sixth most watched show. It's been off the air for what, almost 15, 20 years. Wow. But it's Gee. people love it. They and do. I've been so lucky to be on one show, but actually three shows that are still feel very relevant between Golden Girls, Gilmore Girls, and Roseanne. It, it's really true. It's kind of like what happened with Suits, too. Suits has been gone yeah. so long, and now all of a sudden, yeah. Um, Stan, I have to ask you this. You talk about the women in your life, your, your mother and your grandmother and your aunts, and what big influences they were. And I have to tell you, on page 207, the tribute to your mom and that beautiful picture of her just made me weep. She was a very strong influence in your life. She was, you're gonna make me weep now, but I lost her uh, two and a half years ago and that uh, became the end of the book. I wasn't planning on that. Uh, she started experiencing dementia and luckily I got her to move down from Santa Barbara to LA and be three minutes from my house so I could see her all the time. Um, it was very difficult, I'm sure your viewers have had relatives or no people yes. with dementia yes. and dealing with grief was really really difficult those 13 days which 13 has is my birthday and i have a ring that has 13 and i just suddenly realized 13 days she from the stroke to her death yeah. so in some weird way i was preparing myself for that but it was really the most 13 difficult days i've ever had i obviously would love five more minutes with her yeah but yeah. She was suffering, and I know she is in a better place. I think of it now that um, she would always come to all my plays and all my tapings of the show, but now she has the best seat in the house. Uh, no obstruction of view, she can see me, and I talk to her now more than ever, and when I talk to her, I actually hear her voice back. I can hear her cadence. Yeah. And she makes me laugh, and, and that has been a, just a, a sense of um, support for me and, and helps me get through. But there are times, some difficult days, you know, yeah, birthdays, holidays. Um, I, I have lost a parent too. I lost my dad and I know exactly what you're saying. And the thing is, you do feel them, they live in your heart. I think about my dad every single day. He's been gone 24 years. I think of him every single day. And I see my dad through my children. And, and that's a beautiful thing too. Um, Stan, and someone said they didn't know my mother, but they can see her through me and my book. That's true. And she yeah. said a wonderful thing I put in the book. She said, even if you weren't my son, I still want to be your friend. And uh, that was probably one of the most beautiful things she ever said to me. I love that. I love how she supported you through your life. And you can just tell, uh, I mean, she's so proud of you and she's smiling on all your success now before we leave how can they get your book amazon goodreads it's all over the place um it's been so beautifully received and if you do get it take a picture find me on instagram i love seeing everybody holding them up or they have their dogs but yeah we need a picture with you there we go <laughs> really exciting to be able to reach people and i would love to see people in person somewhere i hope to be doing little book tours all over the united states well i hope that you do and if you come to augusta you know i will be your tour guide okay okay let me know stan zimmerman have a wonderful day great talking with you if you're looking for a wonderful day trip maybe exploring a new place that's not too far away i've got just the thing we've got details on washington wilt's spring tour of homes coming up after the break